Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Zinema, and over there we have John Lindowski. Hey. How's it going, John? Pretty good. It's been a long day of game watching and recording, but... <laughs> yeah, it has. We're both pretty tired over here. First off, I want to say uh, thank you to our sponsor, Hockey Locker, 2002 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 404-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They will outfit you for all your hockey needs. And all, they also have fan gear, uh, Admirals jerseys. Uh, they have a couple Preds jerseys. They have Seattle Kraken merch, if I remember correctly. They have all your Midwest teams. Uh, they have skates, pucks, sticks, you name it, you need it. They got it. Um uh, also, if you're looking for a Halloween costume, a hockey player is not a bad idea. All right. Remember, if you're going to buy skates, use skate guards when you walk on asphalt. Otherwise, you will rip up your blades or concrete or sidewalk or whatever you want to call it today. Um, right. When I was a kid, we just called it a sidewalk. But so many other people are like, oh, it's just concrete. No point. But let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I want to give congratulations to a fellow Milwaukee team, the Milwaukee Brewers, for placing the NL Central. Um, this is their second time doing so in, I believe, 10 years, because they did it in 2011. Yeah. Um, so 10 years, literally. Um, probably the best roster I've seen the Brewers put out in years. I mean, probably in my lifetime. Let's be honest here. Um, right. The Bucks winning the championship earlier this year, it would be great. If we could get another one, um, wish the Packers well luck. Uh, I know that they're playing the 49ers right now. Do not know score currently. I will update you guys on that at the end of the show. Um, but today, uh, the Preds took on the Florida Panthers. Um, this was game two of a split squad scrimmage. Um, game one was kind of back and forth. Yeah. This one was not that. No. This was a more fundamentally sound game, and I'll get into you uh, get it, into it why we got beat. But that's beside the point. Um, let, so let's just get into the stats real quick here, uh, just to, to kind of open the room of t- conversation. Um, shots were even at thirty apiece. Not a bad night if you're going to do that for your opener. Um, All right. Face offs with 30, or sorry, 53 to 47. Um, Florida, not bad, not great, about as even as you can get without being even. Um, the Predators were 0 for 4 on the power play. Panthers were 2 for 5. All right. <laughs> like I said, sorry, folks, if I cough a little bit on the show, I'm still recovering from a cold. If you watched game one, um, penalty minutes were uh, 10 to eight for the, uh, in, in, unfortunately in favor of the Preds. Um, I will get into some of that in a minute. Um, hits were 36 to 23 Preds. That is a pretty good start. If you're saying you want a physical lineup, that's a good way to go. Right, it is. Um, and then you have blocks, 18 to eight Preds. Giveaways, yep. much better on this game in the giveaway department. Nine to eight, you were about as close to even as it could get. Right. Um. In that sense, um, like I said, I was gonna, I was gonna give you guys a little bit of the uh, reason why I, I, I think that we suffered a bit because, uh, I mean, you had a slashing call five minutes into the game. You had two penalties in the second off of a tripping and a hooking. Um, it, it, it's just, some of it was like Josh Healy's hooking against Anthony Duclair. Healy's a more physical <coughs> defenseman. And when you put up a guy like Duclair against him, who has speed and skill, sometimes he can become overmatched. Right. And, and these penalties will happen just because yeah, you don't they will. You do not want to get beat bad. Right, you don't. And, and, and sometimes it is better to take the penalty and hope to, to save your butt than give up a goal 
and and not at all. Um, so there's that. Um, so let's get into the scoring because I know first period yet again, same as the first game. They were feeling each other out. Yeah. Uh, second period, uh, you had uh, Anthony Duclair scoring his first of the preseason with an assist from Brandon Bontor and Barkov. They played their NHL starters, most of them in this game. Yeah, they really did. Nashville did not. No. So for that, whatever the outcome is, I am proud of the Preds of whatever they did accomplish. Right. So Ben scoring also in the second was Carter Bernhagen with with an assist from Barkov and Bontor. Their second, Bernhagen's first. All right, those were both on the power play. I want to bring this to the attention of some because I think it is very important. What's, uh, what was that guy's name? Mason Marshman had a hit on, I believe it was Rocco Grimaldi. And it was a high hit. I mean, he was head hunting. Right. And, and, and in my personal opinion, that is just, in preseason, that is not necessary. No, it really isn't. <clears throat> um, um, so I, I think that it, it is a bad play. Um, and, and I think that it is, is, is really frustrating when you right. see that in preseason. Um, and uh, so I'm going to move on from that because it's kind of frustrating. Yeah. Um, but Igor Afanasyev has proven why we how we have touted him so highly on our show yet again against a good goalie, which I'll get to the goalies towards the end of the video. Against a good goalie, he is going to be the cornerstone of this or, uh, of the Florida Panthers organization. So tip of the cap to him. He is very talented, but I, I, I mean, uh, Afanasiev scored with an assist from Law, who are both guys going. Well, there's a few roster spots open. Let's try and see if we can get him. Right. Try to outperform a guy like Tomasito. You try to outperform a guy like a, a, a Cole Smith, a Rocco Gravaldi, a Colton Sissons. Those guys, some of those guys, Nick Cousins, those guys are, are squared away. But, I mean, it, it, it's not looking very good um, for them in that sense. Um. Uh, then scoring in the third period was Brendan Bontor with an assist from Carter Verdhagen and uh, Ale Alexander Barkov. His third of the game. He assisted on all three, so tip of the cap to you there. Like I said, right. they said coached and ready and, and not something I was too keen on seeing. We were out coached off the jump in both yeah. games, and, and that reflects on our coaching. But uh, in that for the Preds, the whole game was uh, David Riddich, which um, I was a fan of Riddich when he was with the Stockton Heat and with Calgary and uh, yeah. splitting with Calgary and Toronto. Um, I think he's a good goalie. I don't think he's an NHL starter, but I think he can serve as a serviceable backup and a short-term starter if your goalie gets injured. Right. Um, he stopped 27 to 30 with a 0.900 save percentage. Not bad for a guy who gave up three goals. Right. Not bad at all. Um, given the fact that two of them were scored on the power play. Um, I, I and, and one of them, I believe that was uh, um, Duclair's goal. And the, they won that off the face off. And he just floated to the side and wired that top shelf. They had no chance. They weren't even set yet. Right. 
That's how you do it. That's how, and it, it's the power play out coached. It, it was they were out coached on the power play. Yeah. And and versus penalty kill. Um, and it was a boarding call against Tomasino, not Grimaldi. So I stand corrected. So uh, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, Tomasino's wearing 26 and Grimaldi's wearing 23. So if you look at the jersey from an angle, at the angle we had, could have been a possibility that I made that mistake. Um, so I apologize. Um in that for the uh, Panthers was Spencer Knight. Uh, Spencer Knight's been one of the highly touted goalies over the last few years. If you haven't heard yeah. about it, he's the guy that came in for the Panthers at the end of the season and played their entire playoffs and beat off uh, Bobrovsky for the starting job. Yeah. I mean, you did, not many kids could do that as a goaltender. Right. Um, so there's that. I'm not going to get into the scratches of this because, um, well. Too many. Let's see. There's about 37 of them per team. Right. Not go there. But, I mean, when you start, let's see, you have Barkov, Reinhardt, Duke, Duclair, Vern Hagen. And you had Forsling. Noel Juleson, Montor, Montor, and Dudamara. And then you start your goalie the whole game? Yeah. You're playing for keeps in that game. Right. You don't do that in preseason in a split squad. I think the Preds will remember this next time we see you. Yeah. So there's that. Um, just wanted to give a little update. Yeah. Um, on some stuff. Um, I know that we have fans of a lot of teams on our show. Yeah. Amongst the league. Um, and I know that they go to games all over. So I wanted to give you guys the this is a weird one, but I'm gonna give you the COVID protocol for every NHL team. I have them all. Look at that, John. I threw a curveball at us. Because mm -hmm. I just got it. I literally just got the list. All right. Teams that are requiring proof of vaccination only. So you can only go there to their games if you're vaccinated. Buffalo Sabres, Calgary Flames, Canadians, New York Rangers, Ottawa Senators, San Jose Sharks, Seattle Kraken, Toronto Maple Leafs, Canucks, and Winnipeg Jets. All of the Canada teams do not surprise me, given how Canada has handled COVID. Right. Um, especially with how last season was done. Now, I'm not going to get into whether we're pro-vaccine or not. We are both vaccinated. That's all you need to know. Right. That's our opinions. Our opinions don't matter when it comes to sports. I'm just giving you the protocols. Don't shoot the messenger. All right. Teams that will... Uh, either proof of vaccination or evidence of a negative test within 72 hours of the game. Anaheim Ducks, Boston Bruins, Chicago Blackhawks, Edmonton Oilers. So one Canada team has decided not to go that route. Right. Edmonton Oilers, uh, LA Kings, Nashville Predators, um, New York Islanders, and St. Louis Blues. There are 14 teams that will not require you to do anything. These are those teams. Arizona Coyotes, Carolina Hurricanes, Colorado Avalanche, St. Louis Blue Jets, or St. Louis Blue Jackets. <laughs> 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 Whoops. Okay. Columbus Blue Jackets. They were close enough to St. Louis. <laughs> Dallas Stars, Detroit Red Wings, Florida Panthers, Minnesota Wild, New Jersey Devils, Philadelphia Flyers, Pittsburgh Penguins, Tampa Bay Lightning, Vegas Golden Knights, and the Washington Capitals. All right. So I know that we've kind of floated around going to Minnesota. We've floated around going to Nashville. What we decide and when, we will let you guys know. 
but we do plan on trying to at least take in one NHL game, whether it be in Columbus right, or Nashville or Columbus and Nashville. Who knows? Because if we're going to Columbus and then they're in Nashville, might as well take the extra couple hours. Right. Especially if it's in, within 24 hours of the travel. Um, and with us being vaccinated, it's much more possible. Um, children at this time under 12 are not required to have COVID tests or anything like that. They just require them to wear masks. Um, so for those of you with children, that is what they're requiring in, in um, uh, the, the teams as far as um, the ones that are uh, vaccinated or proof of negative test. In, in the vaccinated only, you cannot take your kids to a game without a vaccination. So if you're a single parent and you're planning on going out with the guys and you're, you gotta take your kid, well, you looks like you're not going, sadly. And, and, and that's, or you get a babysitter. Um, but, uh, you know, um, we wanted to, I wanted to bring this to the attention of everyone because um, these players, they don't need to take this home to their family. I don't wish COVID on my worst enemy. I'm not going to say go get vaccinated because that's your choice. Yeah. I can't force you to do something you don't want to. My opinion, be damned. Right. You know, and, so. and I don't swear on shows. So, but, but I believe that it, it is up to the teams and up to, up to the league to make their decisions. I am not the one to judge. And other league news. The Olympic hockey schedule was released on the, uh, three days ago, but was never announced amongst major news outlets, which is probably why I never saw it. Right. Even the NHL kept that one. So um, they did put that out there. Um, it will start on February 9th. Uh, the first game being uh, the first game being the Russian Olympic Committee versus Switzerland. That is at three forty Eastern time in the morning. So four o'clock our time. All right. Um. Uh, the first game that we're, me and John are probably going to watch is the introduction of China's hockey team um, against the U.S. at uh, about 8, 9 o'clock our time, which is about when me and John get up. So duly noted for you folks, if you message us, that's when we'll probably get answered. So uh, there's that. Also, um, we are back on YouTube, so please give us a subscribe over there. On Facebook, we're pushing for 2,000. That's our next milestone we've got pushed for. Yep. We want that by at least start of next season. So we're not in a rush. But, and we're pushing for 100 on YouTube. So for you folks, if you greatly help us out with give us a subscribe, give us a like and a follow over on Facebook. Uh, also, we are on Twitter and Instagram. If you check out our Instagram, it's 9 out of 10. It's John. There's a rare occasion I pop it's in It's you. <laughs> yeah. Um, normally, if you see goalie masks, it's me. Right. If you see bread stuff, it's sometimes me. Um, but um, almost every four hour, two hours, we're checking and making sure that everything's up to date. So yeah. if you want your up to date news, um, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We will be, we are normally pretty quick on that stuff. And sometimes um, we do share other things on our story. Correct. So everyone is aware. Yes, yeah, so a major hockey news. Um, as far as that is concerned, um, one thing I did want to talk about, but I think we should kind of save that for another video. But that's up to you, John, if you want to really talk about it. Is the Buffalo Sabers stripping Jack Eichel of his captaincy? Oh, might as well do it. It's relevant. It is very relevant because this is something that that is very it's not a classy thing to do. No, it really isn't. And 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 
please bear with me, folks. You're going to sit here while I do this, but I want to prove something to you guys. Before the Preds came into the league, There we go. I was a Sabres fan. I love this jersey. That goalie on the back is one of the greatest of all time, and anybody that argues me is, well, have fun. <laughs> There's a reason I said one of. But I still love the Sabres, not as much as I love my friends, but I still right. love them. And one of the things that has really Put I, put me on them on my crop list. The ownership seems to be hiring outside of hockey people for the NHL, and you cannot do that. No, you really you can't. Do <coughs> um, I know a lot of Sabres fans get flack for how bad their team is, but you really got to pinpoint that on the ownership at this point. And, and the CEOs and, and the front office there, because at this point, that's on them. I mean, you lost right. one of your top players for practically nothing. Um, you've lost, well, Eichel's probably never going to come back. Probably not. And, and, and you're just talking about an insane thought process of how are you – going to keep doing this if you're like, well, our goal is to build a young team. Yes, I understand that. The Preds are doing the same thing, but yet we're competitive. Right. You know, and, and, and comparing them, Ottawa, Detroit, they're somewhat competitive every game. They're not getting shut out all the time. Right. And, and trust me, I watch the Sabres, not as much as I watch the Preds, but I do watch and when I see games, I'm just like, poorly coached. The guys aren't in it. You know, and, and when you see that, it, it's disheartening as a fan. And then now the COVID restriction on, you're going to be hurting for money. Yeah. I mean, so many teams lost money because of COVID that, that, that you, we're trying to get back to normal play here. Like a normal playing field where we don't have to worry about vaccines and stuff like that. So let's right. get that out of the ballpark. But we're talking, you need money to build you a championship team. You're talking about losing money to escrows and talking about losing money here. And, and, and the arena costs are more than what you're making. Then at that point, you have to make a decision of, okay, the state mandate is this, but I can't really abide by it or I'm going to be out of business. Right. And, 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 you know, I have family still in Buffalo, and they love their Sabres. They give me a lot of flack for doing what I do. But <laughs> trust me, I hear about it. And, but I love them. I love <laughs> the friends, and I love how the organizations have treated us. They've done a yeah. wonderful job. And, and, and my family out there says that they don't feel that from, from Buffalo anymore. Not like with the original ownership that they, they, they just don't feel the connection to the city right. from the team, not as much as they used to. Now I yeah. will give a lot of credit to the Buffalo ownership. They do also own the Buffalo Buttes, which is a WNHL team, which is uh, women's professional hockey. Right. And um, the Buffalo Buttes have amazing jerseys and, and it's really cool to watch them play and, I do love how they play the game, and, and I love women's hockey, so um, I do watch the WNHL from time to time, and, you know, um, just giving a progressiveness to the sport. Um, right. And I think that's so important. Um, uh, the, the female that was the first signee ever of the Tampa Bay Lightning was actually a, a female goaltender out of college, um, and, and she played for them, I believe. She even played in the IHL with the Vegas Raiders, I think they were called at the time. I mean, you know, uh, the, the game's been so progressive since the 90s, and we've right. been ahead of everyone. Right. You know, um, you know, Cami Granado is a scout for the Kraken. We have women leading uh, commentary all over the league. 
Um, yeah. uh, Lindsey Raleigh has shares a desk with a, one of the greatest coaches and, and hockey minds of all time. He brought hockey to Nashville, brought hockey to Atlanta. He grew hockey in those areas. Terry Chris. Um, much not patting the Preds on the back there, but you know, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that most fans just overlook. Right. And, 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 and trust me, we don't, our show's for fans by fans. We don't overlook nothing. No. We pay attention to every little detail of every game. When a guy screws up like the Tim Peel, we were actually the first podcast to cover it. So and also thank you to all you folks that watched it. That was our yes. final video on YouTube and Facebook today. Thank you all so much. That was thank actually you. the last video that me and a former co-host uh, Chris did. Um, I wanted to take this time to uh, actually remember one of our, me and his friends, uh, uh, Sapo, uh, that's his nickname. Uh, to my remembrance, his name is uh, Christopher. Um, and uh, he is... He had passed away this last weekend. Um, our thoughts are with him and our former co-host as a friend still. Um, you know, uh, we wanted to say that our thoughts yeah. are with him. And, and with him and his family, uh, Chris was very close with the family. Uh, they were like family. Um, if you guys remember, I used to do a wrestling show. He helped there. So um, I, I had my friendship with him as well. Um, he was there when I needed somebody to talk to. So um i wish him i wish him peace and 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 eternal happiness um so i think a lot of people uh will uh find solace in knowing that um we remember our fans um also yeah. uh, there's still a gofundme for uh tina gala's um father who passed away on our facebook page uh, please help her family get through these tough times from one hockey fan to another. Um, we use our platform not only for hockey news, but to bring the community together. So yep. Thank you so much for watching. This has been from thank you. Nashville. It has been a long day. We are going to go take our butts to bed. Uh, it looks like our teams may need a nap today after this. We will see you back. As soon as we have either a breaking news or we will see you Thursday for the Preds and Lightning game three yep. of the season. See y'all.